What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu slash Android. In this video, you're going to learn the first steps on your journey to becoming a Android developer or a Kotlin developer in general, because we're starting with the basics, which will be variables. So you're going to see what different variables there are with the val and var keyword and the keywords of mutable and immutable. And this is really just the beginning of the entire journey because there is a lot more to learn about Kotlin. And Kotlin is the programming language that was chosen by Google to be the one for future app development, even though they also have Dart or Flutter. But basically, if you want to specifically build Android applications, Kotlin is the way to go. And if you don't want to miss out on all of the other videos that we're uploading, definitely hit the like and subscribe button and also check out the playlist because in this playlist, you're going to learn everything you need to know about Kotlin and start building a bunch of cool applications. So let's get started. We are going to get started with Kotlin code and the focus of this video will be to first of all, set up Android Studio so that we can use it in order to learn the basics very easily. And then we're going to learn the difference between val and var. These are super important keywords in Kotlin development. And they are really the absolute basis because you need to have a way to store information for the runtime of your application. And in this case, we're storing, for example, the amount that something was clicked. So we're storing it in this variable called times clicked. But let's go ahead and create a separate project where we are going to not have all of this boilerplate code. So the code that just is created for us in order to get even something running. Let's really have a very simplified version of it in Android Studio. Therefore, let's go ahead and create a new project. And I'm going to create one with no activity. And I'm going to call this one Kotlin Basics. Kotlin Basics. Like so. You can call it however you want. And the package name is also not going to be very important in this case because we're not going to publish this application. It's really just for us to play around with Kotlin. The only thing that is important is that you selected Kotlin here, which should be done by default. And now let's create the project. Now, what will potentially happen is that this screen stays open and you don't even know that there is a second screen open with the Kotlin basics. So you will find that there are two instances of Android Studio. Okay. so. Let's go ahead and go into the app folder and then into Java. And what's important here is that you have Android selected here at the top. Otherwise, the structure will do look differently. As you see here, if I select project, for example, or packages, everything looks very different. So let's go to Android and then under Java, let's go under U tutorials, Kotlin basics, or however your package name was that you have selected. And let's create a new Kotlin class slash file. I'm just going to create a file, not a class and nothing else just a file that I'm going to call basics. Okay. So this creates this basics.kt file for me, which is a Kotlin file. The extension KT stands for Kotlin. And now inside of it, you can see that it just has one line of code and that says package EU tutorials dot Kotlin basics. If it has any more code in here, you can just delete it. What's important is that it is just a Kotlin file. Okay. Now at this point we can shut down this project part and we can get started with the code. So I'm going to start with the main function. So I'm using fun main and then brackets and then curly brackets. So this fun just stands for function. So we are creating a function and this function is called main, which is a very special function. It's not a general function. It's really a function that is the starting point of our application. So if I were to create another function here, let's call it hello. You see that it has a different color. That's because it isn't used. And second of all, I don't have this play button next to it. So this play button is only going to be available for the main function, because as I said, it's the entry or starting point for our application. It doesn't exist for this hello keyword. Now inside of those brackets, I could add parameters. We're going to see what this means later on. For now, it doesn't matter. And then we have the curly brackets and they are important because they are the body of the function. So what's inside of those curly brackets, that's the body of the function. And that's where we can add the code that we want to be executed once we run the code. 
So if I run this now, nothing will happen because there's no code inside of the curly brackets. So even though the Gradle build will run, there's really not anything to be displayed. So you can see here, no text, no nothing. Let's change that by quickly adding a print statement. So print is a very special method and we can now enter something that it should say. So I'm just going to say print hello world. So if I run this code again, it will display hello world here. You can see now it says hello world. This print method is just a code block that tells our IDE, okay, I want to display something. So it displays it onto the console, which is this part here at the bottom. So here you see run, you can close this by either clicking on run here or by clicking this hide button, but then you can open it again by clicking on this run option here at the bottom. And then you can of course make changes to your code. So let's change this to, for example, hello Dennis and run it again. And there you are, you see, it says hello Dennis now in our console, which is this part here at the bottom. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android Masterclass because in this course, you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. Okay, so that's the print statement. And we're going to use print statements quite often because they just allow us to see the value of something. In this case, the something will be a variable. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a variable and I'm going to give it the name, my name. So the variable is going to be called my name. And then I'm assigning Dennis to it. All right. So let's use my name instead of using Dennis here. So instead of saying Dennis, I'm just going to say hello, empty space, plus, and then my name. By the way, you are, can also see that we are using parentheses here. So these parentheses, they just say that this is a string. Okay, we're going to learn about the data types in the next couple of videos, but for now, we're just focusing on variables. So we see that we have this new variable called my name, and then inside of it, we store the value. So we assign it with this equal sign, we store the value Dennis. This allows us then to reuse this variable and use it in our print statement. So what we're doing here is we're just saying, hello, empty space. And then at the point after that, we add the entry of my name. Okay, so let's run this and see what's gonna happen. And you will see that there will be no change. It will still say, hello, Dennis. So now let's change that to, for example, Frank. So my name is going to be Frank. Now let's change it. And here at the bottom, it will say, hello, Frank. Now, there is another thing that we can do with variables, and that is to assign a different value to it. So I can now go ahead and use my name and assign a new value to it. So I could just say, instead of Frank, it should say Heidi. All right. So now my name is not going to be Frank, but my name is going to be Heidi at that point, because even though it was assigned Frank at the beginning, it was overwritten later on. And then when it was actually retrieved or used, it had the value of Heidi. So let's run our project again. And we will see that now it says, hello, Heidi. So that is pretty much what you can do with variables. You can store values in them. And we're going to see what kind of values you can store in them because currently we're just storing text in them, right? In this particular case, even names. But of course you could store other types of text in them as well. And now we have used another keyword in the last video, which was val. So we didn't use var, but instead we used val. Now the difference between var and val is that a var variable can be overwritten. A val variable can not be overwritten, it can only be set once. So here we are setting the value for that variable and it cannot be overwritten, which is why we get an error here. You see, we get a little problem. We can hover over it and it will say val cannot be reassigned. So we cannot reassign a new value to a variable that is 
using the val keyword when it is created. So that means that this line is not going to work. Now we can get rid of it and then everything will be fine. But now we have the name of my name. So uh, we are writing a variable where we want to only be able to assign it once. We don't want our code at any point to be able to overwrite that value. And that is what you would use the val keyword for. And by the way, it's also more efficient in terms of processing power. So if you know that you don't want to ever overwrite the value for a given variable that you are creating, then use the val keyword. If you're not sure and you believe that you will have to override it at one point, then you use var. Of course, you can start with val and then when you realize I actually want to override the value or reassign a new value to this variable, then you can change the declaration later on and change that to var. And you can go ahead and just say change the name here to Claudia, for example. And let's run it real quick. And we see we get called hello Claudio. Okay, so that's basically the difference between var and val. In the next video, we're going to look at the data types of numbers.